After seeing my first image, I fell in love and I decided this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. There are going to be times in life where I have to defy odds. There are some times where I'm going to do things that are out of the norm. The journey of a young man began with uncertainties. So growing up, my father had always told me that because of apartheid, the only choices they had were to become either teachers or nurses or become laborers somewhere. And he always told me that now that apartheid is over, I can do anything I wanted to do. So I have this insect collection box. I just thought that was really cool because it was one time that we actually got to do what the early explorers got to do. Go out there, look for something specific, collect it, identify it. That is where I first started really liking invertebrates. So at the moment we are in the Cedarburg, it's um, in the Cape Fold Mountains, it's a, it's a crazy place. If you look amongst the rocks and break this very brittle shale apart, you might just see the remnants of organisms that used to live on the seafloor millions and millions of years ago. My grandfather is from the wild coast. And my grandfather is a traditional healer. There's nothing under the sun that he doesn't know to make cures out of. He was considered to be a person of the water. Umutu Amats or Umutu Umlam. I only started this journey of going to the ocean, studying the ocean, three years ago. Prior to that, the only time I went to the beach would be during the festive season, just to stand and then let the waves wash me and then a ducky thingy would wrap around my feet and then it would flip me out and then spoil the entire beach day for me. Having grown up in Kailicha and not having an opportunity to learn to swim, to learn marine biology, to learn about the wonder this vast blanket behind me holds has been quite said in a sense because when I started learning these things I just wanted to learn them such that I can be able to teach everyone that like me did not have this opportunity to learn. Kelp. They are strange. They are this macro algae. It does not have a root system like a plant that anchors it. Instead, it has like suction pads. They use their fronds and their stipe to absorb nutrients into the kelp. We find like fishes normally find it as a safe place, a haven. It's a nursery ground. So there's a couple of species that eat kelp. There's a couple of species that amplify the nursery role that kelps play by attaching to kelps like epiphytes. It's a fully functioning forest down there. We always try to find the lines that connect the ocean itself, the water. That big blanket is the actual connector. You see life in the kelp forest feeding deep into areas that I would have imagined them to be deserts or just darkness. 
you go deeper and you find these things that just look alien because there's nothing on land that looks similar the colors are not similar the way they feed and behave are not similar like birds flying around plants you see all these different kind of fish swimming in between these animal forests these corals and sponges and using them as homes so you get corals that you usually see on the TV in tropical reefs those are most of the time hard corals stony corals so they attach to a substrate and they deposit calcium carbonate and form these coral reefs. Soft corals are corals that have adapted to living in sand. They have the structure that inflates below the sand and they just move in the current. They really look like aliens. <laughs> Some species of fish actually use them as a medium to spawn on. They deposit their eggs onto the polyps. So then essentially you have an organism creating this 3D, this complex environment which would be featureless because it's usually just sand. Working on the Deep Forest project has been interesting because it's a multidisciplinary project. So you have young scientists and established scientists with different expertise. You can sit in on a conversation and learn so much from that interaction. When I came into this journey, I met extremely dedicated people. I had to redefine what is working in order for me to be in the same kind of life. And that is an environment that is bound to build passionate scientists and, and giants, people that are going to have work that reaches far and beyond. My message to any young person in Cape Town, whether they live close to the ocean or not, is that it's possible. Even if there might not be anyone representative in a specific space where they are the local expert, it's about having this blind faith that it's actually possible. One of the sayings in the colored community is you just dollar what you must, which loosely translates to you just do what you have to do. There are people out there, like myself, that would, um, any time of the day, like give advice to anyone that wants to uh, pursue marine science, whether they live close to the shore or whether they live somewhere on the Cape Flats. For me, what I've realized in this journey is that there are going to be times in life where I have to defy odds. There are some times where I'm going to do things that are out of the norm but I'm gonna do something that my heart skips a bit every time when I think about it. So to be in the marine space is by far one of the most exhilarating things. The fact that we know more about the moon up there than backyard our ocean just didn't see there's plentiful opportunities, there is so much. And then quite importantly, if you just find the right person and does what you think you would also like to do, that is the first way to getting a career that is rewarding and happy. I think it's best to choose a happy career for anything else. Can you hear the sound of those waves?